Hola amigos, bien o no, y saludos desde Medellín. Hoy te voy a compartir un parte con este libro. Uno con mis favoritos. Muy, muy interesante. Um, va escribiendo originalmente muchos años antes. Uh, 1947, originalmente. Y si usted tiene la oportunidad, también es una película, pero muy difícil para encontrar con el actor muy famoso, Gary Cooper. Pero bien, voy a compartir un parte con este libro. Uh, empezar hoy con página número 390. So, hello from Medellin. Um, today I'm going to share with you a reading from one of my favorite books. Ayn Rand's The Fountainhead, first published in 1947. By all accounts, one of the uh, most requested books in the Library of Congress. Um, but anyway, of its type, um, a classic. So I'm going to read you a bit from page 390, where in this book we're introducing um, some history of one of the key characters in this book, um, a gentleman by the name of Gail Wynand. But I'll leave you to read the rest of the book to understand how this kind of fits together. This piece is interesting because it describes quite well, I think, um, what New York was like way back, like a hundred and something years ago, when this book is set. Let's have a look. There were people in Hell's Kitchen who never ventured beyond its boundaries, and others who seldom stepped out of the tenement in which they were born. But Gail Wynand often went for a walk through the best streets of the city. He felt no bitterness against the world of wealth, no envy, no fear. He was simply curious, and he felt at home on Fifth Avenue, just as anywhere else. He walked past the stately mansions, his hands in his pockets, his toes sticking out of the flat-soled flat shoes. People glared at him, but it had no effect. He passed by and left behind him the feeling that he belonged on this street and they didn't. He wanted nothing for the time being, except to understand. He wanted to know what made these people different from those in his neighborhood. It was not the clothes, the carriages, or the, the banks that caught his notice. It was the books. People in his neighbourhood had clothes, horse wagons and money. Um, degrees were inessential, but they did not read books. He decided to learn what was read by the people on Fifth Avenue. One day, he saw a lady waiting in a carriage at the curb. He knew she was a lady. His judgment on such matters was more acute than the discrimination of the social register. She was reading a book. He leapt to the steps of the carriage, snatched the book and ran away. It would have taken swifter, slimmer men than the cops to catch him. It was a volume of Herbert Spencer. He went through a quiet agony trying to read it to the end. He read it to the end. He understood one quarter of what he had read, but this started him on a process which he pursued with a systematic, fist-clenched determination. Without advice, assistance or plan, he began reading an incongruous assortment of books. He would find some passage which he could not understand in one book, and he would get another on that subject. He branched out erratically, in all directions. He read volumes of specialised erudition first and high school primers afterwards. There was no order in his reading, but there was order in what remained of it in his mind. He discovered the reading room of the public library he, and he went there for a while to study the layout. Then one day, at various times, a succession of young boys painfully combed and unconvincingly washed, came to visit the reading room. 
They were thin when they came, but not when they left. That evening, Gail Wineland had a small library of his own in the corner of his basement. His gang had executed his orders without protest. It was a scandalous assignment. No self-respecting gang had ever looted anything as pointless as books, but Stretch Wineland had given the orders, and one did not argue with Stretch Wineland. So there we are, a short reading of uh, this much larger book. Um, oh, my reading is a, a vitally important skill. Um, no matter how we pick it up and wherever we start, um, it's a lifelong adventure. So on that happy thought, I shall uh, bid you cheerio from Medellin for today.